Hello. Happy homebrew Wednesday. Just get myself a beer. Ooh. Keg full of pale. Well, welcome to Blind Spirit Brewery Homebrew Wednesday number 69. That's a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, I'd just like to begin by thanking everybody uh, on BrewTube, which is a page on Facebook, for bigging up my channel. And I've now gone up to 173 members. So that's really kind of you. I was their random pick on Sunday. That's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. So this week, or this weekend, I was brewing um, the Arrogant Bastard Ale. Or the Blythe Spirit Review, uh, Blythe Spirit Brewery version of Blythe's, of the Arrogant Bastard Ale. I'm doing really well here. That's the first drink I've had, and um, I've got quite a lot of footage here which I've put up. It's quite a long video. I'll understand completely if you want to skip through bits, etc. So please enjoy. We'll uh, see you next week, and. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching all your videos. Just a big welcome to all my new subscribers and also my current ones. Thank you for staying with me. All the best. See you later. So just making up some more uh, star sound. I do it by the five gallon. There we go. I never have enough star sound. Oh, that's better, I think. <laughs> so while the star sound's filling up, you see <laughs> Christmas tree still doing well. It's uh, February. I must take it to the tip. So we've got about 16 and a half litres of water in there because I use about two and a half litres per kilogram of grain. So here we are, there's the grist for the Blind Spirit Brewery ABA. The special bee is the secret. Well, not the secret, but the uh, Certainly the uh, one of the key ingredients. So next we have to get that from there into there. So we're going in now and it's important that um, you make sure that when you're putting your grain in that you uh, stir it all through so that you don't get any dough balls otherwise that affects your efficiency. Now I like them after about 65 to 66 degrees centigrade which I find sorry I got interrupted there. So as I say I like them actually about 66 5 66 centigrade centigrade because I just need the strength and I want on the ABA or the ABV rather of the ABA and uh, I find it always works for me. So I'm going to carry on going in. Okay, so we're doing in now. And it should have the consistency of uh, a thick porridge. Let's just see what the temps are like. I don't know about you, but I can't see it. There we are, it's better. And it's decided to go off. Here we go, I'll be back. Would you believe it? 64.9. I'm going to add a little bit of hot water just to bring that up because I'd really like to be around 66. Well, as you can see, I'm wearing some of the mash on the glasses, <laughs> but it is at 66 now. So I'm going to put it to bed for an hour and let it mash 
and then we'll come back. So we're back inside now. Whilst the um, the mash is happening, so I'm going to weigh out some hops. And all the hops in the ABA that I do is uh, are, are Chinook. Okay, so what we're going to look for is 29 grams. Oop, too much. Spot on 29. There we go. And that will be our first word hop. Oh, Boo Cats decided to come in. Wait, you come out of the way. Wow. These have just arrived from uh, Chris Harrison Hawks at uh, Harry Brew 69, as you better known, in the uh, Brew Tube from Idle Valley Brewing. Idle Valley Brewery. And uh, the best before the end of 2018. My goodness, they smell good. There we go. There's the hot drops. That's first word. Then. Those ones go in throughout the boil till eventually that one goes in it flame out. And they're all the same amount of time, 29 grams, um, same weight rather, not the same amount of time, 29 grams in each hop drop. All Chinook, beautiful. Actually it's quite good alpha acid on that one. Still got quite a bit left in this one. Because obviously, it didn't use it all. So what I what I normally do is seal it up, and it goes into the freezer and keeps well. Okay, so that's the mash over with now an hour, and uh, we're just about to begin the sparge. Now there are many different high-tech ways to sparge, with sparge arms and all kinds of devices. Um, I use a bit of tin foil on the top and I poke holes in it, which eventually will let through the sparge water when I go in. Not high-tech at all, but works fantastically. And what we're about to do now is called ball muffing, whereby I will run uh, the wort out there we go, into a jug and then that jug I will pour onto the green bed at the top and it settle down and the whole idea is when it runs clear um, no husks or anything else in there, and then we can start the sparge. I have to say, at this point, it smells delicious like warm hogs, lovely dark colour to it, a special bee. That really is a big help. Uh, and it does contribute a lot towards the finished bee. See now there's quite a bit of ball offing in there, or quite a bit of uh, wort in the ball off. I'm about to pour that on the top. lovely colour. And you can see some of the grains that were left behind. So there we go, that's the first runnings of the BSB AVA.
So I've just tested that, and the first running is 1.110 SQ. So I'm running some star sound into my um, little chill cube. Not that you need to, because obviously if the heat it goes in, I don't want it to boil up later on. Kills any bugs off, but it's belt and braces really. Okay, that's coming nicely, so you can see it's now time to start with the sparge. Okay, so there's the water over there. I like to sparge about 77 degrees. Okay, so we've collected about 29 litres now. <coughs> time to stop. And um, now I was going to put the hops in, uh, the first one, and on the boil at 90. But I think I'm going to first wort hop. So I'll put that in first and then put some of this into the uh, the boiler. And as it's coming up to the boil, then you get a bit of, not quite as harsh a bit of this. Okay, so we've got uh, 29 grams of Chinook going in. And then the first word. Going in over the top. So that's the element covered. Time to uh, switch on. You can see the hot pellets breaking up in there now. As I add the rest of the water in. Now remember, when it does come up to the boil, it will be a 90 minute boil. Here we go. So it's uh, quite full. You can see all the hop bits on the pellets coming up now the hop spines is in i know you'll be thinking well hang on a second you didn't put the first hops into the hop spider i know i didn't because that's a cost <laughs> but uh it'll be in for the rest of them so i've just done a, a pre-boil gravity and um, I've got 1069 on that. Now, I was expecting about 1056 according to my estimates. So that's always a bonus. Well, I'm busy uh, clearing up the grains and everything else and the mess and wiping down um, the benches. So whilst I'm uh, waiting for the ABA to come to the boil. Ooh. Yeah, it's not far off now. Of course, when it comes to the boil, I'll remove the lid because we don't want to have any, have any uh, nasties in there. And what better, although it's not the right glass, <laughs> although it is a lovely glass. is the keg filler pail. Cheers. Just what I needed. Okay, so we're going to call that the boil achieved. And put the timer on for 90 minutes. Okay, so 45 minutes, and the next hot dog goes in, 29 grams, another 29 grams of Chinook. Right, <coughs> so this is the uh, third hop drop at 15 minutes, one for the tablet in there, and uh, a teaspoon of yeast nutrient together with the 29 grams of Chinook hops. Ooh, let's give it a little stir in there, I think. A bit steamy. The fizzing up was from the Protoflock. Oh, 
Okay, so here's the final 29 grams of Chinook going into uh, the no-chill cube. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, now, I know that when you're... Uh, oh, that wasn't very good. I know that when you're um, putting them into the cube, you're supposed to reduce the amount of hops. Now I um, have found that this amount of hops in the cube is exactly what I need. So therefore I haven't reduced the amount at all. It's exactly the way I like it. Okay, so flame out. Or switch off because it's electric. And uh, let's see, just check that's all in place hopefully. Well, and there we're going into the no chill cube. As I say, I did put some star sand in there, but obviously, with the heat uh, 100 degrees there, there's no need at all. It's just any time it doesn't get so felt in places. Yep, still rolling in there. It's quite funny because um, I've just gone live on Facebook as I'm doing this. And of course, when I'm filming it landscape like this on the video now, if you do that and put it on Facebook, it ends up making you sideways and everybody else gets a sore neck, as Nate Peacock said. <laughs> okay, see you later. There we go. That's all the trube left in the bottom. That's why you get your protoflock in there to coagulate all the proteins to color. And there's the no chill cube. And that's the end of the brew day. Beer belly blues. What? color are my new shoes cause my feet and belt buckle are things I rarely see my problem is not my glands it comes poured from aluminum cans and Pap's blue ribbon's been awfully good to me